Uh, hey, uh, Eric Darling here uh, with uh, to this very to this very day. Merry Christmas to me. I I, I did not fire myself. <laughs> Uh, whatever. Uh, so I wanted to uh, do a video to sort of walk through um, a store procedure that, um, well, I have a blog post coming up about it, and the, it's on GitHub now, kind of in flight with me tinkering with it. Uh, it's one that I've been using uh, for a little bit now to help diagnose servers that are under some sort of resource pressure, primarily CPU or memory. Uh, I call it SP underscore pressure detector. Uh, it's not <laughs> terribly well named, but uh, it it sort of it sort of does what it says it will do. Uh, it'll it'll run a few diagnostic queries uh, that will collect information at the query and server level uh, that will spit you back some just quick what's going on, what's causing pressure, what's feeling the pressure. Um, what do what does resource usage look like on my server right now? So if we just give this a quick run, <coughs> uh, use the right use the right window and all that, and give this thing a quick run. Uh, the first thing that pops up up at the top is uh, this store procedure really does work best when you run it via the DAC. I mean, any store procedure that you run when a server is you know melting down <laughs> on fire is going to work better when uh, you run it with the remote DAC turned on. So there's a if you ha don't have that turned on, uh, you'll get this message up at the top, and you'll also get the command to turn on the remote DAC. And there's also a link here to uh, Kendra Little's video about how to use the remote DAC, which is, I, I think to this day, one of the most helpful things that I've ever seen in the world of SQL Server. Uh, so thank you, Kendra, for that, as usual. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually copy and paste this out and turn this on so that I, I get rid of that. Now, after you configure the remote DAC, um, I want to point out a couple things. One, uh, inside the store procedure, we'll no, long, we'll no longer get that message. There is also another bit of logic inside of the store procedure that will fire off a line like we saw up at the top if someone else is connected via the remote DAC. But now in order for us to use the remote DAC, we have to, and now this is how I always do it, if you try to do it like query connect, uh, change connection, then what's going to happen is Object Explorer is going to try to connect via the DAC, and that's not going to be a good time for anyone. You're going to get some weirdness out of that. So if I change this and I say, uh, where are we going here? <laughs> I, I forgot what I was doing. Connection, there we go. Change connection. What we have to do now is we have to say admin here, and then down here uh, I'm going to put in my super top secret password, which is hopefully correct. Uh, we're going to get that error message, but that message is a lie. Uh, if you look down the bottom here, it will say admin. And if I hit F5 here, I will have a connection. Pretty sweet, right? And actually, if I grab this and I sit over here, uh, uh, oh yeah, wait, because I got because <laughs> I got to do that regular one. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, uh, connect. Oh, let's see. If I hit this, we'll say. Uh, we'll have this message up at the top now, and uh, we'll get some information about who stole the DAC and where their login is coming from and all that. So uh, this, session, this session over here is using the admin connection. Uh, this session here looks at who stole it and gives us some information about uh, where they're coming from. So hopefully we can track them down and say, hey, uh, I would like to use the DAC, please. Thank you. So anyway, uh, what this returns for information, up at the top, is uh, if we have any queries that are asking for memory, that's what you'll see up here. Uh, this will look a little bit more interesting once we have some uh, queries that are asking for memory, but uh, I figured I'd walk through it a little bit and get some nice visual artifacts over there. That looks good. Way to go. Okay, I don't know what's going on now. This is things. Everything is seemingly spinning out of control. Uh, but I'll get some information about uh, how much memory queries have asked for, gotten, um, and also if they're queued up asking, waiting for memory, uh, information about to get parallelism, how many workers they've taken the query plan. Down here is overall system memory utilization. This is just a tiny little VM. So uh, my max target memory is just a hair under 10 gigs. Total server memory is same. Uh, available is about the same. I haven't granted anything out. I haven't used anything, yada, yada, yada. Uh, down he here, the third result set on is information about uh, CPU usage. So here we'll have 
uh, how many threads this VM has in total, uh, how many have been used, how many are available, if anyone, if any uh, threads are waiting for a CPU, and if we have any requests that are waiting for threads. Um, and down here, this will only fire off, this is just a DMV query to look for any session specifically waiting for the thread pool wait. And then this final section down here is uh, a DMV query, a bit like this one from uh, the top, except it looks at a different DMV. This one here looks at the resource semaphore DMV. This one here just looks at um, sys.dm exec requests. And it's different because not every query that asks for a bunch of CPU is guaranteed to ask for memory and vice versa. So uh, this is, you know, just to get things specifically that are uh, CPU intensive. This is ordered by, if you're on 2016 plus, this will be ordered by this column over here called parallel worker count. If you're on an earlier version of SQL Server that doesn't have that column in it, then it'll just be ordered by CPU time descending. I can't do much better than that on older versions. All I can do is, all I can do, all I can work with is what I have. But uh, yeah, this, this isn't gonna change much here, just me running it now, uh, but let's see, let's get going. And let's uh, let's feed some information into this. Uh, I'm going to use RML, uh, the, uh, the OStress utility from the RML utilities. Uh, it's a free Microsoft distributed program that you can use to throw some stress at your server. Uh, sort of like SQL query stress, except it's just a command line. Um, I like it because, I don't know. I mean, SQL, SQL query stress is great, but sometimes when I really really like throw a lot of, of work at it um it'll crash and it'll take a long time to kill so i just kind of stick with rml utilities to avoid that catastrophe so um just to point out really quickly um as far as memory to data goes i have uh 16 gigs total assigned to this vm uh right now uh about two gigs is available SQL Server is using 14 gigs, and the database that I'm hitting, the Stack Overflow 2010 database, is about 30 gigs. Uh, available physical memory is being called high right now. That's, that's fine with me. I'm okay with however, however SQL wants to talk about that. But uh, let's first use um, that's what the pressure detector to look at uh, what a server looks like when it's hitting thread pool weights. So I'm going to stick uh, a bunch of copies of this query uh, against my server. Uh, I'm going to run that, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to hit F5, and we're going to get a couple, we're going to start to see some results come in here. So we have up here, uh, we're, we're, we, since these queries did ask for memory, uh, but not so much memory that we ran out, they've only asked for about 23 megs, it's a pretty small amount of memory. Um, let's see that, you know, they've uh, they've all gotten their, 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 their memory. If we look down in this second result set, uh, we can see that uh, available memory is a, just a little bit lower than total memory, and that granted memory has pulled some out of there. So we've used about 240 of what we've granted out. We've granted out 92 to 92 separate queries, which is, I don't know, it's pretty awesome. But we've also hit these thread pool weights. I'm going to cancel this so that my desktop doesn't light on fire. Uh, when we look down here, uh, we can see that we have 512 total threads, uh, and we've used 533, which puts us at negative 21 <laughs> available threads, which is not good. Um, and if we look into this result set, you know, this is why a lot of scripts that um, attempt to show you what's going on on a server will fail rather miserably when... Um, when uh, you're hitting thread pool issues. Notice the session ID column over here. It is all null, uh, which means that uh, all of these requests that have been waiting some seconds here, three, about three seconds on down the line, about a second and a half, all of these, n all of these queries uh, are being stopped at a point so early on in the process that they don't even have a session ID yet, which means if you try to join uh, this DMB to anything, you're gonna get some wonky results back because they don't have session IDs. Oops, sorry about that. Crappy, right? So this is what a server looks like when it's hitting thread pool. Now, a good example of what I was just saying is up here. So all of these queries, whether they've gotten memory grants or whether they're currently executing, whether they're a current, currently executing requests, they all have session IDs. So we can see that we do have some queries running. Uh, we can see that we have 92 queries running down here, right? And we can see that we have some that don't have a session ID. Something kind of funky that'll happen with SQL Server that I hope will hopefully show up here, which may not show up here because I'm trying to show you right now. But um, we'll notice that a lot of 
these queries are running at DOP4 and that they have eight, right, eight reserved workers. If we scroll down this list a little bit, we should hit a section where SQL Server will stop honoring DOP, right? Like even though it's the same query running, even though it's the same query plan, we're going to see a whole bunch of queries that have been downgraded to uh, DOP1 from DOP4. So let's, again, we'll pray to these demo gods. We're going to click on a DOP4 query plan, right? We have uh, DOP4 right here. We're going to look at this query plan, and we're going to see a p this qu plan running in parallel. If we scroll down to this DOP1 plan and we look at it, it's still going to show that it's parallel, even though SQL Server is unable to honor the parallel plan. SQL Server has downgraded that plan to DOP1. Pretty cool, right? Sweet. All right, so we've, we've found some things that we can use to start diagnosing problems, right? We've seen a bunch of copies of this query running. SQL Server has downgraded DOP for many copies of it. The query plan is lying to us about being parallel. We have qu sessions that are waiting for many seconds on ThreadPool. Clearly, everything is, everything is going wrong here. But at least we were able to find the, query that, the queries that are running that's causing it, and we can you know, work on either tuning those queries, or I don't know, maybe getting this, this four-core <laughs> VM up out of the dumps. The next demo that I'm going to show you is what happens with resource semaphore. Uh, so I'm going to grab uh, this line here. Let's clear this screen because we're superstitious people and run that. And if now when we run the old pressure detector, we should see uh, memory pressure. Now, the, the, I'm going to kill that off again. This desktop could light on fire any day now. But when we look uh, look here, we're not going to see thread pool weights. We're not going to see thread pool here because that's not what we care about. We're not going to see um, a lot of threads being exhausted because that's not what our problem is. Our problem is up here in this first section. Uh, we're going to up here. We have a whole bunch of queries that have requested memory and have been granted memory. Right, and we we look down here. Uh, we can see total memory is still about 9.7 gigs, but now available memory is down to about 212 megs. So we've granted out almost 9.5 gigs of memory to all these little individual queries. A lot of the times when resource semaphore hits, it's, it, I mean, sometimes it's like those like big whopping reporting queries that come along and just like giant fist pound your server. Other times it's a bunch of tiny little hornets that come along and just sort of suck the memory life out of your server. So we have those, but where this start, this top set starts to get a little bit more interesting is uh, when we scroll down, eventually we will find the queries that are stuck waiting. So what changes here is uh, used memory, uh, well actually it'll change over a little bit further. So granted memory will start being null, uh, used and max used will be null, and these queue IDs will start being populated. So SQL Server will start queuing uh, queries up within uh, within SQL Server to wait for memory, for wait for other queries to finish. And when that starts happening, then we'll see this wait type resource semaphore. So that, that is a sign of memory pressure because we have queries that want memory, they can't get it. And we'll see that these, these query because it's the same, a copy of the same query over and over again, they're all gonna end up in QID eight and they're gonna have this wait order, right? So we have zero through 11 because we have 12 queries waiting and uh, this this query up here is of course the next candidate that's why it has the one there when when the when one of these queries w would have finished because if, if I let them run which I didn't but if one of these queries would have finished then this query would have been the next one to get a memory grant and start going uh, now there is some stuff that'll happen like <laughs> eventually queries will will give up and they will um, they will run with like their lowest required memory but that's, a, that's just a weird, weird situation. Anyway, uh, I find the store procedure rather useful and helpful when I'm troubleshooting these problems. Again, it's best when you connect uh, via the DAC uh, to do that. Um, but it can be pretty pretty helpful to get a snapshot of both the query of like query level and server level s like s stuff that's going on with queries when things are really hitting the fan on a server. Now. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't use other stuff like SP who is active or uh, stuff from the first responder kit, um, but you know it's just another option you have if you're troubleshooting a server that's on fire. Um, I don't know. I I I like it. I like it. If you don't like it, then you don't have to use it. That's the that's the beauty of of these things is no one no one will force you to hit F five. 
Anyway, there will be a blog post out eventually um, to kind of – this video in it to release stuff. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're cool and you follow me on Twitter and you pay attention to these things. Anyway, see you around.